Since snagging his own show, James Corden has become one of the main faces of late night television. But when the host's alleged history of ill treatment to waitstaff catches up to him, there's definitely something that celebos need to remember. Servers never forget. Will the wrath of a famous New York restaurateur be enough to make James acknowledge his wrongdoings? Have I missed anything? Did I miss any news? <laughs> Or, in a bizarre turn of events, will it be the restaurateur who ends up punishing himself to the disbelief and dismay of James's online critics? As James finds himself in more controversy, his questionable past starts resurfacing. What exactly did James Corden do to cause so many people to dislike him? While the path to stardom is never easy, James Corden sure made it look like it was. He seemed to simply materialize on television sets across the globe as a full-fledged celebrity with his own late night slot, entourage of famous friends, and numerous hosting gigs. Of course, for those familiar with James's beginnings, this was hardly the case. Raised in Buckinghamshire with his two sisters by a social worker mother and a Christian book salesman father, fame was by no means promised to James. He was, however, blessed with a natural confidence he attributed to being raised in a cocoon which was filled with love. It was perhaps this gift that gave James the courage to pursue acting as he auditioned from stage to screen and landed various parts before nabbing a starring role in 2000 on the drama series Bat Friends. The show was a great success, and James's career only continued to boom as he found himself in the cast of Alan Bennett's Tony Award-winning play The History Boys in 2004, and co-created and starred in his own BAFTA and British Comedy Award-winning sitcom Gavin and Stacey in 2007. But it wasn't until 2011 that James found mainstream success in Richard Bean's One Man, Two Governors. I'm my own worst enemy. Stop being negative. I'm not being negative. I'm being realistic. The play started at the National Theatre in 2011 before coming to Broadway in 2012, where James's performance earned him that year's Tony Award for Best Actor in a Play. The actor's career had officially crossed the English Channel to America, and James was ready to make his mark. But while James continued to take on acting projects, his work was about to enter unknown waters, the world of late-night television. In 2015, Craig Ferguson handed the torch of The Late Late Show on CBS to James, who, despite his success, was an unknown to the majority of Americans at the time. Still, James was able to make the show his own by introducing segments like carpool karaoke, building a roster of legendary guests, and using the platform to spread positivity rather than the cynicism of some of his late night peers. But while James's lack of edge was part of his charm as a host, it also made him a prime target for online mockery. The host crosswalk musical number, an example of what might be applauded on the show, was awarded the ultimate penalty in a trial by internet, as one user ruled, electric chair. Whether it was the in-your-face nature of the performance performance, the lack of consideration to citizens trying to go about their day, or the forced levity in a time when the pandemic was ravaging through LA, there was something about the spectacle that grated on the internet's nerves. With one user noting, it's so rare for everyone on the internet to hate one thing and for that one thing to be the worst thing ever made. And despite James's early acclaim, his latest film credits have done nothing to boost his rating in public opinion. No. James wasn't pulling out any tour de force performance capable of winning over his critics by playing Bustopher Jones in the critically panned 2019 film adaptation of Cats. Nor was James's portrayal of a gay character in Netflix's 2020 film The Prom, seen by both critics and viewers as deeply offensive, the best way to bolster his reputation. And as for 2021's jukebox musical adaptation of Cinderella, well, again, no critical darling. But this wasn't the first time James had fallen from grace. See, the host had a tainted image before most Americans had the slightest clue who he was. It was the 2008 BAFTAs where viewers caught their first glimpse into an unappealing side of James's character when he accepted the award for Television Program of the Year for Gavin and Stacey and used his speech to complain that the show wasn't also nominated for Best Comedy. And James's star only continued to dim as tabloids painted him to be a budding party boy, and his projects failed to salvage what was left of his professional credibility. The once esteemed actor was now seen by the British public as arrogant attention-seeking, and perhaps too entranced by celebrity status for his own good. He'd also become a bit of a loose cannon. At the 2010 Glamour Awards, actor Patrick Stewart took issue with the way James stood with his hands in his pockets while others accepted their awards, and he wasn't shy about criticizing The View. From where I was sitting, I can see your belly. But rather than ignore Patrick's cutting remarks, James got in the actor's face. Sorry, I'm waiting for the punchline. Go on. No, seriously, go on. Okay. No, um, go on. You can see my belly. 
and we can all see you dying right now. On The Rob Brydon Show, James talked about Patrick Stewart's comments, which he saw as unwarranted after the more than flattering introduction he'd given the actor. I said, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome an actor who's held in such high esteem. He's God's own voice coach. Please welcome the brilliant Sir Patrick Stewart. A year later, Patrick Stewart admitted to Classic FM that his statement had been the result of inebriation. I'm afraid I went too far. I was somewhat out of control. I have nothing but admiration for Mr. Corden. I still blush in remembrance of it, he told the station. And the pair later made up. It really hurt when you said those things. It just all happened so fast. I know it did, little chipmunk. By this time, James had fallen back in public favor through his performance in One Man, Two Governors, and was able to provide perspective on his past behavior in a 2012 interview on BBC Radio 4's Desert Island Discs. According to James, he developed an attitude in 2008 that made him a punching bag for the press, a punishment the actor felt he deserved. Someone asked me recently if, I'd, if I felt I was represented badly at that time. And, and my answer was, well, no, I was representing myself quite badly at that time. He described his speech at the 2008 BAFTAs as spoiled and bratish, and the period of his life that followed as destructive. I got lost beyond anywhere I thought I could have been. At the time, James was the lethal combination of newly single and newly famous. This door had opened to this world that I thought looked like fun, where people go, you're amazing. You're great. Can I have a photo? Come out with us. And while his celebrity status was intoxicating, going out couldn't fill the void his behavior was rooted in. It just came out of a point of loneliness, is the truth. According to James, marrying his partner, charity worker Julia Carey, and having their first child together had brought clarity to his life. It really shows the important stuff to be important and everything else to be not that. But was James really the changed man he claimed to be? Well, it didn't seem the actor's past of public disgrace was as distant as he may have liked. In fact, just over a week after his BBC radio interview, James was again the subject of criticism after he cut Adele off while she was accepting her Album of the Year award at the 2012 Brit Awards. I'm so sorry. Can I just say then, goodbye, and I'll see you next time round, yeah? Stop. And while James may have hoped he'd left his reputation in England, a 2019 Ask Me Anything the talk show host held on Reddit proved otherwise, as viewers refrained from throwing James any softball questions and instead went straight for the jugular, with questions that included, have you ever considered being funny or likable? Is there any chance of bringing back Craig Ferguson instead? Ever thought about coming back to the UK? And if so, what can we do to stop you? But amid the less than friendly inquiries, there were also accusations. In a story that foreshadowed scandal to come, one Reddit user recalled a time when they were allegedly seated next to a table that included James and Harry Styles at a restaurant in London's Chinatown. Town. They wrote, We didn't bother you, but you were a massively entitled c who yelled and treated the waitstaff like sh and when one of my party politely suggested you calm down, you got really aggressive and threatening, in a chubby way, like a boozy panda. And this wasn't the only comment that cast doubt on the authenticity of James's cheerful nature. Another Reddit user claimed they attended a live taping of James's 2010 sports comedy panel show, A League of Their Own, and witnessed the host throw multiple tantrums over minor things at the production staff, and shout at audience members who asked for photos after the show. The Reddit user then allegedly went to the VIP tent, where James's behavior continued, they stated, the other celebs came in and spoke with people. James came in for a brief moment. Someone asked politely for a quick picture. He abruptly said later and then f***ed off to, I'm guessing, his changing room for the rest of the night as they didn't get their picture before kickout time. The user allegedly left the viewing with one major takeaway, claiming, seeing him like that made me realize everything you see of his on TV is a complete persona. And really, his natural personality is just a complete self-entitled In fact, there was no shortage of tales regarding the person James allegedly turned into when the cameras were no longer rolling. One TikToker, Chloe and Curve, commented on a video about the host, saying she used to work in a UK supermarket that stocks celebrity books. This meant celebrities would often come in to meet the head office staff, including autobiography author James Corden. She described the now late night host as the absolute worst, alleging that he didn't look at anyone and kept asking his agent when it was time to go. According to Chloe, James was rude and entitled and acted like everyone was a huge inconvenience on his day. She wrote, this was like 10 years ago too, and he's still doing it. Then there's an anecdote that's been circulating the internet that doesn't offer the most flattering depiction of the host in his personal life. The story, 
which starts on a flight from London to New York where a woman and her screaming baby were seated beside James Corden, was read by Australian radio duo Brendan Jones and Amanda Keller. Corden's cabin mates were impressed to see that he didn't say a word, he didn't make any sort of complaint, he simply put on a pair of noise-cancelling headphones, pulled an eye mask over his eyes, turned away from the woman and went to sleep. However, once the plane landed, any brownie points James had earned from his cabin mates were quickly revoked as the truth came to light. Passengers were surprised to see Corden remain seated as the woman with the baby struggled to open the overhead locker. And even more surprised when she turned to Corden and said, for F's sake, can you at least hold the baby while I get the bags down? The woman was his wife and the baby was his baby. <laughs> <laughs> while there's no evidence the events of this story took place, the story continues to spread online as it blends with the all too similar accounts of the star. Worked for Burberry head office and he was known by staff for being awful. I went to a filming of his show. Between takes, he never smiled and looked miserable. When cameras were on, that TV personality everyone knows turned on. There were also those that seemed to exploit the online disdain for the host to their own advantage. From an interviewer who claimed James was rude to him because the interviewer only wanted to talk about Taylor Swift. Did you guys talk about that at all? I, well, you know, we were always talking to everyone about it. Okay. To the son alleging James was raging at a cyclist after being knocked over. It was hard to separate the sensational from the factual when it came to the mythology surrounding James Corden. Still, the host rubbed people the wrong way. He literally turned to Chloe and went, You're drinking champagne at 4 p.m. Yeah. on Monday and you're at work. Yeah. yeah. We've won. We've won. <laughs> like, just be a little, like, dial it down a little bit, James, like you're on television. He doesn't seem to have that radar. There was something about James's on-air persona that felt phony to viewers. And it wasn't just the fact he was pretending to drive the carpool karaoke car, but seeing past the polished, PR-trained veneer of late-night host was nearly impossible, unless you look into James's past. See, the star wasn't always so calculated in what he presented to the public. Take, for example, the BBC Three sketch show James later referred to as a mistake, Horn and Corden. Created with Gavin and Stacey co-star Matthew Horn, the series only ran for six episodes, all of which were chock full of crude and at times offensive humor, including a sketch many criticized as homophobic. And while James later apologized to Attitude magazine in 2018, telling the publication, I can't imagine we would do that sketch today. This wasn't the last time the star put his foot in his mouth. At an AIDS fundraiser in 2017, James made the ill-advised decision to bring up a very recently disgraced film producer. Right here in LA, it's so beautiful, Harvey Weinstein has already asked tonight up to his hotel to give him a massage. But rather than take the audience's grumbling as a cue to abandon the topic, James pressed on. I don't know whether that groan was that you like that joke or you don't like that joke. If you don't like that joke, you should probably leave now. And on. It has been weird this week though, hasn't it? Watching Harvey Weinstein in hot water. Ask any of the women who watched him take a bath. It's weird watching Harvey Weinstein in hot water. Later, after James was called out by two of Harvey Weinstein's accusers, the host tweeted an apology, stating, To be clear, SA is no laughing matter. I was not trying to make light of Harvey's inexcusable behavior, but to shame him, the not his I am truly sorry for anyone offended. That was never my intention. James has also been called out for a segment on the Late Late Show called Spill Your Guts or Fill Your Guts. While the segment is meant to provide guests with a choice between answering a question or eating an unappetizing food, TikToker Kim Sarah pointed out that some of the dishes presented on the show as gross were traditional Asian cuisine and delicacies. Wow, it all looks so terrible. <laughs> I know people can't smell it, but it doesn't it's smell really good either. Disgusting. Yeah. It's disgusting. It's horrific. In fact, in fact, this was not the first but second time the late night host had been burned by the same segment. While Jimmy Kimmel was a guest, James was forced to chug a fish smoothie after the fellow late night host asked him to do something he couldn't. And what exactly had the ask been that was so undoable that James had to choke back the briny drink? Simple. Jimmy had asked James to name two of his cameramen. If that doesn't speak to the working environment on the Late Late Show, this tweet from writer Jack Allison in 2019 might. I'd like to state once again for the record that I went to a W meeting for only late night writers and James Corden showed up without any of his staffers to advocate for a low pay grade for late night writers. But the allegation that the host was advocating for lower pay for late night writers was one James quickly argued against, tweeting, Jack, 
I went to the meeting because I was invited, like you were, like every writer on my show was. What you've written here is completely untrue. I asked if there could be a new writers program for people who have interned for a year on a show and want to be writers. James also made a powerful enemy in 2021 when he commented on BTS attending the United Nations General Assembly. Historic moment, it actually marks the first time 15 year old girls everywhere found themselves wishing that they were Secretary General Antonio Gutierrez. The BTS fandom was shocked by the jab about their age and began to refer to the host as a clout chaser and the joke as a cheap dig. The clip was soon removed and when BTS appeared on The Late Late Show in November 2021, James revealed their fans had threatened his life over the comment and apologized for unintentionally hurting BTS supporters. But why are we only examining James's history now? Well. The host's reputation might have stayed buried if it weren't for recent events pulling past allegations above ground. On November 17, 2022, acclaimed restaurateur and owner of the famous New York City French brasserie Balthazar, Keith McNally posted an image of James Corden on Instagram, accompanied by a scathing caption. James Corden is a hugely gifted comedian, but a tiny cretin of a man, and the most abusive customer to my Balthazar servers since the restaurant opened 25 years ago, the restaurateur wrote. Keith claimed he didn't normally banned patrons, but he'd been forced to make an example out of James based on two previous incidents. The first allegedly happened in June, when James noticed a hair on his food and brought it to the attention of an apologetic manager. But rather than meet the restaurant worker with the same level of respect, James became extremely nasty towards the manager and said, get us another round of drinks this second and also take care of all of our drinks so far. This way I write any nasty reviews in Yelp or anything like that. The second incident allegedly occurred on October 9th, when James and his wife attended Balthazar for brunch, and the star's other half specifically requested an egg yolk omelet with Gruyere cheese and salad, an order that would soon incite tragedy. A few minutes after they received the food, James called their server MK and told her there was a little bit of egg white mixed with the egg yolk. The waitress then allegedly informed the floor manager and the kitchen remade the dish, but unfortunately unfortunately sent it with home fries instead of salad. This is when the late night host token smiley facade presumably slipped. You can't do your job. You can't do your job. Maybe I should go into the kitchen and cook the omelet myself, James allegedly yelled at the server. Keith claimed the waitress was apologetic and the manager smoothed the situation over with champagne. And while the restaurateur alleged James was pleasant to the manager, his nasty attitude left the waitress very shaken. But later that day, it appeared the Balthazar owner had a change of heart. Keith told his Instagram followers that James had allegedly called and apologized profusely. Being no stranger to the occasional social blunder himself, the restaurateur strongly believed in second chances. Anyone magnanimous enough to apologize to a deadbeat layabout like me and my staff doesn't deserve to be banned from anywhere, especially Balthazar. So come back to the five and dime, Jimmy Corden, Keith wrote, all is forgiven. But while James may have apologized in private, in public, it was the host's opinion that he hadn't done anything wrong. In a New York Times article published on October 20th, James described the decision of blasting a complaining customer online as insane. Still, James wouldn't provide a version of events that proved he behaved otherwise. In fact, discussing the now viral social media post or allowing it to derail an interview that was meant to promote his new Prime miniseries, Mammals, didn't appear to be on James's agenda at all. I haven't done anything wrong on any level, so why would I ever cancel this? I was there, I get it. I feel so zen about the whole thing because I think it's so silly. I think it's beneath all of us. It's beneath you. It's certainly beneath your publication, he told the New York Times. Yet it seemed the restaurateur's post had still managed to taint the atmosphere. As when New York Times reporter Dave Itzkoff asked if James was all right, he noted the host cagely responded, about what? What do you mean? When it came to the conversation that had now developed online over his present and past behavior, James waved it off as the opinions of only a small portion of the population. Should we not all be a little grown up about this? The late night host asked. I promise you, ask around this restaurant. They don't know about this. Maybe 15% of people. I've been here, been walking around New York. Not one person's come up to me. We're dealing in two worlds here. But if backlash against James really was emanating from a niche subset of the internet, his recent interview had just angered a very vocal minority. On October 21st, Keith fired back in an Instagram post he titled, Storm in a Restaurant Teacup. I've no wish to kick a man when he's down, especially one who's worth $100 million. But when James Corden said in yesterday's New York Times that he hadn't done anything wrong on any level, was he joking or was he denying being a to my servers. Whatever Corden meant, his implication was clear. He didn't do it, the owner of Balthazar wrote. While Keith admitted he didn't witness the incidents detailed in his initial post firsthand, his staff did. 
and the restaurateur trusted their recollection as they had nothing to gain by lying, while the late night host most certainly did. Keith continued, I wish James Corden would live up to his almighty initials and come clean. If the supremely talented actor wants to retrieve the respect he had from all his fans, all four of them, before this incident, then he should at least admit he did wrong. If he goes one step further and apologizes to the two servers he insulted, I'll let him eat for free at Balthazar for the next 10 years. But other restaurant owners had different experiences with James as a customer. New York restaurateur Stratus Morphigan described James as nothing but pleasant to TMZ, and fellow restaurateur Todd English also defended James describing the host as absolutely lovely to his staff. But someone else claimed to have witnessed James's treatment of waitstaff, and she wasn't as impressed. Becky Habersberger, who many already know as the wife of Try Guy Keith Habersberger, posted a TikTok where she recounted her own run-in with the late-night host. Becky was walking with her friends past famous LA eatery Little Dom's when the celebrity encounter fell into her lap none other than James Corden. And it seemed not only had Becky happened upon a star, she happened upon a star in the middle of an argument. As I'm approaching, I hear James Corden yelling at this busboy. Um, in my head, I'm like, oh, oh my God, what's going on? So being the nosy little Nancy I am, I obviously beelined straight for them down the street. Becky alleged she overheard the busboy explain to James the restaurant was closed until dinner time. He's telling James Corden that he can get him a reservation, you know, right when they open. Um, he was trying to be really accommodating. And James Corden yells at this busboy. A lot of good that does me, mate. A lot of good that does me. The host's alleged words had stuck with Becky and even became a comedic bit in her circle. Now every time my friends and I are frustrated with something, we do shout out, A lot of good that does me, mate. A lot of good that does me. Um, so feel free to use that one. On October 24th, James decided to address his band from Balthazar in the opening monologue of his show, during which he presented an alternative version of events. According to the host, his wife's specific instructions for her dish were the result of a serious food allergy she had. But according to James's recollection, he hadn't reacted to the kitchen's mistake, at least not the first one. James alleged the dish came to them incorrectly three times. And you know what they say about the third strike. In the heat of the moment, I made I made a sarcastic, rude comment, right, about cooking it myself. And it is a comment I deeply regret. But that one sarcastic comment is the only utterance James confessed to, and he didn't expand on the first incident Keith had described, other than to claim it happened in 2014. According to the host, he hadn't shouted, gotten out of his seat, used foul language, or done anything that made him feel like he'd behaved badly. I've been walking around thinking that I hadn't done anything wrong. Right? But the truth is, like I have, I made a rude, co rude comment. He said he reached out to apologize to Keith immediately after seeing his post, but by that point, the story was already out, and as James put it, Well, people were upset. He proceeded to read out tweets, skipping over any anecdotes that might corroborate the recent scandal, and instead opting for the more hate-fueled comments wishing the host would go to hell, or making fun of his segments. The host ended the monologue with a promise to remedy the situation with Balthazar's staff. I hope I'm allowed in again one day so I'm, when I'm back in New York I can go there and apologize in person which is something I will absolutely do. But it appeared James didn't have to wait for an invitation. The next day, Keith offered what the restaurateur claimed would be his final comments on the situation, stating, Last night on his TV show, James Corden very graciously apologized for his outburst at Balthazar. It takes a real man to do this. In the past, I've behaved much worse than Corden but wasn't man enough to apologize. The restaurateur had decided to lift the ban on James and go one step further by imposing one on himself instead. I'm going to ban myself from Balthazar for two weeks, people who live in glass houses, Keith wrote. But following an October 28th London Times article where James again claimed he'd never screamed at anyone or sworn or used derogatory language during what was now being referred to as Eggate, it seemed Keith couldn't restrain himself from again using his platform to call out the late night host. I don't want to over egg the pudding, but in Friday's London Times, Corden flip-flopped and told a massive lie again. The owner of Balthazar captioned an October 31st Instagram post. And while Keith had previously accepted James's televised apology, looking back, the restaurateur couldn't help but find the actor's sentiments to be contrived and phony. In the scheme of things, my opinion means nothing. But after Friday's interview and a second look at his fraudulent confessional, I've given up on James Corden. For good, Keith concluded. 
end of story. But if the recent trending of the phrase loser keeps James Corden during the England vs. USA World Cup match proved anything, this story is far from over. And as the fallout from James's latest saga of public shaming continues online, there's no telling what direction the star's tale will take next. As James gears up to exit The Late Late Show next year and starts moving on to different projects, is the actor capable of putting out another performance that will wipe his slate clean in the eyes of the public? Or are James's past mistakes too severe to be forgiven without the personal growth and perspective he once claimed to have achieved? It's a strange thing when, when you go through those periods of where you can really do no wrong. Only time will tell if the piling allegations against the host become a blip in his legacy or remain an unsettling trend. If you are rude to one server, you are absolutely rude to many servers. Like that is not just like a one-off, I was having a bad day kind of thing. That's like, you are trash. This is the story of James Corden, the actor turned late night host who might not be the same person off screen. 